Thank you, Alice. President Grimson, Premier Hammond, Prime Minister Yonason, Ambassador Vasiliev, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, bonjour. As chair of the senior Arctic officials, I am delighted to have the opportunity here to welcome you to this inaugural assembly and to speak to you about the Arctic Council, about its impressive body of scientific work that spans 16 years and the important actions it is taking on key Arctic issues of concern to Northerners and to the world. The Honorable Leona Glukak, distinguished chair of the Arctic Council and Canada's minister for the Arctic Council could not be here today. However, she does send her warm greetings to all delegates. Minister Aglukak, a Ninuk born and raised in the Arctic, and I might add, the first Indigenous person to chair the Council, has a clear vision during Canada's chairmanship, a vision of cooperation, of action, and of success. This reflects the strong messages she heard during her extensive consultations with Northerners and partners in the other Arctic states, which is that the Arctic Council must put people first. This is why the theme for Canada's chairmanship is development for the people of the North. And that is also why it will focus on actions that make a difference to the more than 4 million inhabitants across the circumpolar North. Actions related to responsible resource development, safe Arctic shipping, and sustainable circumpolar communities. Now it is often said that alone we can do so little, but together we can accomplish so much. These are wise words. The world's biggest challenges have never been resolved by one person or one group acting alone. Achieving success is indeed a cooperative effort. And we needn't look uh, any further than an ex the example of the ozone layer. Nations came together under the Montreal Protocol determined to take action to control the harmful substances that were depleting it. And it worked. The same can be said about how Arctic states work together towards the adoption of the Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants. Collective, act, collective action is therefore the best way to address the many challenges and capitalize on the many opportunities of the North. Through the unique structure of the Arctic Council, the eight Arctic states and six Indigenous permanent participant organizations will continue to cooperate to govern effectively in the region and to develop and release key reports that shed light on the state of the North. The decisions taken by the Arctic states to promote and protect the region will be informed by the knowledge and expertise of Indigenous peoples, researchers, scientists, and policymakers from around the globe. Now I should pause here for a moment and say a few words about the Council's Indigenous Permanent Participant Organizations. Ever since the Arctic Council was established in Ottawa, Canada, 1996, they have been involved in all aspects of its decision making. And they provide valuable contributions to its activities and projects. Simply put, the Council could not be what it is today without these key voices at the table. And now, it also includes a large number of observer states and organizations that can make valuable scientific and technical contributions to the projects of the Council's six permanent working groups. We are very much looking forward to working with them over the coming years. The depth and breadth of the Council's many scientific assessments and reports is impressive tackling issues of biodiversity, shipping, oil and gas, climate change, environmental contaminants, human health, and sustainable development, all with the recognition of the traditional knowledge of the peoples of the North. There are too many to name them all, but a few key reports released over the past decade come to mind, such as the Arctic Marine Shipping Assessment, the Oil and Gas Assessment, and the, hum the Arctic Human Development Report. As well, new reports such as the Arctic Biodiversity Assessment and the Arctic Oceans Review were released just this year at Karuna. 
In addition to developing the scientific, its scientific assessments, the Council will also continue to evolve into a policy shaping and policy making body. Within the last two years, Arctic states, under the auspices of the Council, have concluded two important legally binding agreements. One on search and rescue in the Arctic, signed in May 2011, and the other on oil spill preparedness and response, signed in May 2013. Two international treaties in two years. This is significant progress, as both agreements not only enhance Arctic state cooperation and emergency response, but will also help protect the people of the Arctic, their communities and environment. Not to mention the major scientific and technical contribution the Council made to the successful negotiation of the new Minamata Convention on Mercury, which was signed by almost 100 states earlier this week in Japan. These international agreements are concrete examples of cooperation for action, cooperation for success. I'm sure we can all agree that we want to achieve success in addressing Arctic challenges and in seizing the opportunities in the Arctic. Success in promoting economic prosperity and building a dynamic and vibrant region through sustainable development. Success in protecting the Arctic's unique and fragile environment. And success in celebrating and promoting culture, the cultures and traditional ways of the Arctic's inhabitants. For its part, the Arctic Council is tackling these challenges head on. Allow me to give you some examples of our current priorities. During Canada's chairmanship, the Council will establish a circumpolar business forum to advance Arctic to Arctic business interests, share best practices, and engage in deeper cooperation. A special task force, chaired by Canada and co led by Iceland, Russia, and Finland has been created to establish the business forum. This is Minister Aglukuk's flagship initiative and one that will help build stronger and more diversified commercial relationships in the region and will enable business to seize opportunities to create prosperity for northern communities. The first meeting of the task force was actually held here in Reykjavik just a few weeks ago. The Council is also developing an action plan to prevent marine oil pollution in Arctic waters, an initiative that is of crucial importance as oil and gas activities in the Arctic will continue to increase over the coming decades. Both the Business Forum and the Pollution Prevention Action Plan will help ensure that resource development in the Arctic takes place in a responsible and sustainable manner. Two weeks ago, we witnessed the voyage of the Nordic Orion, a Danish Panamax bulk carrier, which sailed through Canada's archipelago from Vancouver to Finland with a cargo of coal, thereby making it the first commercial transit of the Northwest Passage. And we know that Arctic shipping will continue to increase. Of course, with this higher level of activity comes an increased risk of shipping accidents which given the isolated and harsh conditions of the Arctic could have a lasting and damaging impact on the marine environment and northern communities. This is why it is crucial that all states, Arctic and non-Arctic, cooperate to conclude a strong mandatory polar code under the International Maritime Organization. This will provide the necessary rules, framework for safe shipping in international Arctic waters. And perhaps no issue highlights the importance of global cooperation more than that of climate change. In the Arctic, short-lived climate pollutants such as black carbon and methane can have a disproportionate effect on the pace of warming with subsequent impacts on wildlife, communities, and traditional ways of life. Building on its previous scientific work, the Arctic Council is committed to taking action during Canada's chairmanship to address black carbon and methane. A special task force has been set up to develop the actions to reduce these emissions. Such reductions would not only contribute to near-term near -term climate and environmental benefits, but also local health benefits in northern communities. The Council's work also complements the broader global work that's being done through the Climate and Clean Air Coalition and the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. 
There is no doubt that Ar the Arctic is undergoing significant, perhaps even transformational change. Throughout this change, it is crucial to recognize and to respect the traditional ways of the Arctic's inhabitants. This includes everything from preserving languages to conserving hunting and fishing grounds to celebrating different cultures and values. Non-Arctic inhabitants often have little, very little knowledge and understanding of these traditional ways of life. And thus, decisions and actions outside of the region can negatively impact Northerners. During Canada's chairmanship, we will work with permanent or, or participant organizations and other Northerners to promote these traditional ways of life across the circumpolar north. Minister Aglukak and the Government of Canada are very proud in, to be hosting so many Arctic Council meetings in Canada's north during our chairmanship to showcase its culture, its people, and its stories. The region, this region of our country, includes a population of about 110,000, half of which are Indigenous peoples, and makes up 40% of our entire land mass. To put it in perspective, that is an area larger than all of India. We hope that through these experiences, our Arctic and not Arctic colleagues will gain an even greater appreciation for the beauty of our North, but also for the strength, needs, and aspiration, aspirations of its inhabitants. In conclusion, during Canada's chairmanship, the Arctic Council will take concrete actions that make a difference in the lives of Northerners. We all have important roles to play in ensuring sustainable development in the Arctic. From dialogue comes greater knowledge and richness of perspective, and from cooperation comes success. I'm very much looking forward to the presentations and discussions that we will have over the coming days. Thank you. Tak merci, masi cho, miigwech, and kuyanamik. <laughs>